Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guests today are Peter Marshall. He's the solutions architect at Thundercat Technology and Bob Schumann, Deputy Chief Technical Officer at Riverbed. And gentlemen, it's good to have you. I want to discuss, uh, start by discussing the unprecedented explosion we're seeing in the use of telework, the use of VPNs, all of this connectivity across the government because of the coronavirus. If you would, let's start with you, uh, Peter, and maybe give us a sense of what we're learning here, uh, just from the 30,000 foot view. Absolutely. Um, thanks for having me, uh, for sure. This is, is, as you had mentioned, an unprecedented time where the explosion of telework has, has obviously forced uh, the demands on the wide area networks and a lot of distributed systems that is just hadn't been planned for, hadn't been uh, prepared for. Um, typically, when you're seeing a, a federal agency, you maybe have 10, 20, 30 percent of the workforce being remote at any given time, and now you're looking at almost 100 percent on them. So the burden that it's placed upon their infrastructure and, and even some of the carriers' infrastructure um, is, is really a challenge right now for most of my customers. Rob? From my perspective, you know, there's a, some good news, which is basically the internet is a lot more stable than we thought. Right, so we haven't seen any major outages. Everybody's able to pretty much get stuff done um, for the most part. But as soon as you're looking at the federal networks that are out there that people are accessing, I'm seeing customers go from you know, 2,500 users to now 60 to 80,000 users. So a massive explosion of end users that are now having access over VPN and customers are having to figure out how do they deal with the two choke points, right? The home network, right? So that Wi-Fi, that home access, and then the choke point that's in, in the data center, which is essentially the VPN concentrator and the infrastructure that's there. So they're figuring out these choke points exist and now they're trying to go through, you know, what is it that we can do to ensure that people can work from home effectively? Yeah, it sounds almost like the parallel that the world is covered with 75% water, but not everyone necessarily has enough to drink at a given standpoint or a given point in time. Yeah, it's, you know, People have been building networks and they've been planning for disasters. They've been doing, you know, coop uh, scenarios, things of that nature. But there's a lot of networks that are out there that are going to be stressed beyond what anyone ever thought was going to be required of them, right? So 10, 20% of your, of your user base being remote was kind of normal for, for some customers. And now it's 100%. And there's things we're finding out about the uh, internal enterprise networks that we didn't know about that we're having to work around. Okay, and this, that gets us to our next question. And 60, 80,000 people in a given agency, a couple of hundred thousand people, maybe a million people possibly across the government, but not everyone is operating under the precisely same scenario. And you really have to have your technical solution matched to what your scenario are. What are some of the scenes, some scenarios, methodologies that we're seeing, Peter? Well, certainly, um obviously a lot of home users, uh, people coming in from, you know, whether self-quarantined or whatever it is. Um, and, and typically it's coming over some sort of established VPN. Um, but again, as we've already touched on, the, the, the level of usage is so much higher than it uh, had traditionally been. But yeah, I mean, typically you're seeing, um, as we just touched on earlier, uh, coming in over their local Wi-Fi from whatever their service provider is. Um, but I've noticed even in my place where um, I have pretty ample bandwidth, but having so many people at home, you know, extended family, whoever's staying with you, that becomes a choke point as well, let alone, you know, getting back to the data center or to the cloud implementation that you're trying to attach to. Robert. You know, that's actually a really key point, which is basically, you know, the normal operating scenario is if I'm working from home, it's maybe just me. I don't have a spouse that's there. My kids are probably at school, right? So they're not congesting the network. They're not doing stuff. Now all that's out the window. So you have competing, you know, resource needs where you have a spouse that needs to, you know, work remotely. You need to work remotely. Your kids need to be able to do, you know, the things that they need to do to continue their education. And all that stuff's happening at once. And at, at the exact same time, you have to use the VPN as well as every single one of your coworkers. So, you know, that network infrastructure is really strained and we're seeing that sort of strain exhibit itself on the commercial side. And they're in a way more prepared um, simply because they have less stringent security requirements, right? They don't have to send all of their traffic down the VPN versus a lot of our federal customers. There is no split tunneling that's gonna happen because of their stringent security requirements. And that VPN is the choke point and it has to work. 
Got it. So that means it could manifest itself in a couple of ways. I guess latency would be the most obvious way and probably the most difficult to deal with. And so that sounds like that latency could be the result of any one of a number of chain of things, depending on how you're hooked up, the VPN itself, the, how much you're sharing with on the application end or the server end, and also how much you're sharing in your own house. Yeah, yeah, it, there's you know a, a chain of things that are connected together that all have to work well to get a good user experience. And you know what we'll find is that your neighbor's Wi-Fi will impact your ability to get connectivity. The number of people on a VPN concentrator, the uh, the backend infrastructure to an application, and 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 how users are going to connect to it. All those all those things are are, are interoperating or, or interacting with each other. And in some cases, you know, customers that that I'm seeing are having pretty severe uh, pain as, as a result of all that stuff going on. Yeah, and Peter, what are you seeing across the customer set uh, in terms of latency or any other problems that might arise as a result of this shared environment? Yeah, well, definitely one of the big issues which was talked about is um, the split tunneling, where normally uh, traffic that's encrypted goes one way and then non-encrypted traffic goes another direction. But with the federal government, almost all if not all of that traffic is backhauled, meaning that it all goes down the pipe, even if it's completely irrelevant to the organization. And so we've seen a lot of agencies putting out mandates basically saying, do not stream YouTube and other streaming services while you're on our VPN because we're backhauling that traffic. And that can be tremendous amounts of traffic. I mean, you can imagine how many streaming based services are being utilized in this uh, in this moment but that that's definitely one of the things there which absolutely can cause things like latency um, packet loss jitter um, a lot of them when spe specifically using VoIP traffic voice over IP the latency and jitter in there can significantly um, degrade the call quality as well so we have to look at doing a lot of things some common sense don't be streaming stuff over the, the VPN but two implementing a series of quality of service or QoS to say this traffic is more important than this traffic if if it if there's available resources go ahead and give it to them but if there's not I want you to take this piece of traffic off the pipe first all right we've got a lot more to discuss including some of the ways of getting around this some of the solutions and also maintaining cybersecurity Security. We are going to get to all that. But first, we'll take a short break. My guests today are Peter Marshall, Solutions Architect at Thundercat Technology, and Robert Schumann. He is Deputy Chief Technical Officer at Riverbed. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. This discussion is keeping teams together while working far apart. Sponsored by Thundercat Technology and Riverbed here on Federal News Network. <laughs> 